<laughs> that was admit that uh, a lot of people don't even realize they I've called her, she hasn't responded. I've called her more than a few times. But the Zulu nation, I'm like, what the hell is this? I know nobody know what I'm talking about. You'll leave me on the island by myself. I don't know what the hell Bishop's talking about. That's what y'all do. Didn't have to class. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I just don't want to be caught out there. What the hell is this? Get on my damn nerves. So read that again. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom Israel, Shalom Most High Christ Bless. I'm Captain Shamaya. With me I have... Officer Solomon. And welcome to another episode of 15 Minutes with the Captains, all right? And today's topic is going to be disagreements or disagreements in the truth, okay? Um, we're going to go through a few scriptures. It's a vast topic. We have to, I guess, uh, uh, minimize it into 15 minutes um, for your watching pleasure. How about that, right? <laughs> Let's open up with uh, Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, we'll try to get through it all within the time frame, so bear with us, please. And verse 10. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 10. Mm -hmm. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, mm -hmm. that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, mm -hmm. and some pastors and teachers. So as Christ called us all into this glorious truth, he's given all of us the spirit to fulfill various offices, right? Evangelists, teachers, preachers, so on and so forth, right? Go ahead. For the perfecting of the saints, mm -hmm. for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So everybody that fulfills on that uh, office that he called them to do, has a purpose for the edifying, the growing, and the unity of the body of Christ, right? Go ahead. Till we all come in the unity of faith. Until we all come in the unity of faith. We all have to get to the same mindset where we're unifying in the spirit of Christ. Oftentimes, it's, we have ulterior motives. We are unsure. We're unsettled in how we should operate in the truth. But ultimately, we all should have the same outlook on what the end goal is, unifying in Christ, right? Go ahead. Till we all come in the unity of faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, uh -huh. until a perfect man. Until, that's a, obtaining perfection, right? Go ahead. Until the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Right. So ultimately, the perfecting process is us unifying, though we have different offices, Though we might be in different regions, though we might be in uh, uh, different age brackets, ultimately, all those brothers and sisters that are called into various parts of this truth all have to uh, unify under one umbrella. 
It's just that simple, right? Let's go to Acts chapter 15. Hopefully that was uh, clear enough for everyone. Acts chapter 15, start at verse 36. Acts chapter 15 and verse 36. Come on. And some, and some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord. Because if you, if you know the history about Paul and Barnabas, they were together very early on in Paul's ministry. Paul was, I mean, Barnabas was with Paul. So here Paul is telling Barnabas, listen, let's go to all the places that we've taught and go and see how our brothers and sisters are doing, right? Let's see if they're staying strong in the faith of Christ and not going back to animal sacrifice, right? Go ahead. And see how they do. Uh -huh. And Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. Good. But Paul thought not, thought not good to take him with him, mm -hmm. who departed from them, good. from Pamphylia, and went not with them to the work. So now... Paul had a disagreement with who Barnabas wanted them to accompany them. But Paul had a legitimate reason. He said, listen, when we was doing the work in Pamphylia, Mark disappeared on us. He had a legitimate reason for not wanting to bring Mark, right? Go ahead. And the contention was so sharp and between the them. And the contention. And the contention was so sharp between them. Go ahead. That they departed asunder one from the other. So and they... So it was so heated, they had to go their separate ways. And I'm going to read the definition of contention. Contention, heated disagreement. Heated disagreement. Here are some uh, synonyms. Strife, enmity, quarreling, variance. Those are some words we see often throughout the scriptures. We see strife often. We see where the scripture says, let enmity cease. We see that uh, about, we hear about variance often. Right. Especially in Paul's epistles and Colossians, we hear about variants. Right. So this is how heated the conversation got to the point where they had to go their separate ways. Right. So here is a disagreement that's in the scripture. So two godly men. That did not agree on who they should bring or serve a purpose in a certain office. Makes sense, because the office he was given, he lit it. Mark abandoned it. He abandoned it. He came back to do the work, but he it's, it doesn't go into detail why he abandoned his office in Pamphylia, right? He left them out to dry. So read that uh, verse 39. 39. And the contention was so sharp between them mm -hmm. that they departed asunder one from the other. Mm -hmm. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. Mm -hmm. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God. So now... Here we have them going their separate ways. Barnabas ended up taking Mark. Paul took Silas to do the work in two various regions, right? The work is still being done, but there's still that contention that was between them, that strife, that variance, the quarreling, the enmity was between the two of them, right? Let's go to Galatians chapter 2. And here is something I like about Paul, man. Paul, Paul don't hold his tongue. Paul does not hold his tongue. If he has an art with you, he's going to tell you what it is to your face. I like that. I like that. He doesn't, he doesn't go and he's not a whisperer to go tell someone else an issue he has with you, as many of us do in this truth, right? But there's a manner in which we're all to conduct ourselves so that you don't lose the brotherhood, right? Uh, Acts, I mean, excuse me, Galatians 2 <clears throat> and verse 11. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. But when Peter was come to Antioch, mm -hmm. I will stood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Mm -hmm. For before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. So here's the thing. Peter was given uh, the office as well as Paul to teach the Gentiles. Remember, in Acts, Peter was given the revelation of uh, for Cornelius there's no man unclean or uncommon showing that Cornelius was an Israelite so the revelation went to Peter as well Christ they were one chapter apart meaning a very short time frame so Christ went to Paul in Acts 9 Most High went to went to Peter in Acts 10 very very short time frame if not the very same time frame around the same time frame the revelation was given to both of them right 
So here it is, Peter getting the revelation so early on. Now, when it's time for him to, to enact what he was, what was revealed to him, he's drawing himself away from the Gentiles in order to appease those of the circumcision, those who were uh, keeping the law from their time up, Pharisees, Sadducees, so on and so forth, right? So Peter was in error. And here we have Paul correcting him to his face. Listen, you out the spirit, most high revealed to you that the Gentiles need to be taught. They are our people. Why are you shaming them as soon as the, the circumcised come around? So Paul checked them. It's a disagreement, which is biblical, right? So real quick, let's go to, hmm, here's something that has to be said. Uh, Proverbs 17, 17. This has to be said because in Paul's epistles, I'm, we, we just read about Barnabas. In Paul's epistles in Colossians chapter 4, 1 Corinthians 9, this is after what we read Barnabas and Paul departing from one another. Paul still wrote about the accounts of Barnabas. Meaning there was no love lost. They had a heated agreement, disagreement, but there was no love loss as brethren. He never spoke evil of Paul, so on and so forth. He didn't make accounts of Paul. Paul was taken away with dissension, but he did also speak about the work that was done with, not Paul, with Barnabas. Excuse me, with Barnabas, right? Uh, Proverbs 17, 17. Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17. A friend loveth at all times. What does it say? A friend loveth at all times. That's what God says. The unifying that was mentioned that we read in Ephesians under Christ is just a mirror of this. Despite the different offices, the different walks of life, all the, the, the various view, point of views you may have, at the end of the day, the brotherhood, the friendship, the marriage has to be filled with the love of Christ at all times. Period. Despite the disagreement. And if you notice, I just mentioned marriage as well as brotherhood. Because they all are one and the same. Remember, Most High said to love for a husband and wife to love as brethren in First <coughs> Peter chapter 3. So the comparison between a marriage and the friendship between two brothers are synonymous. Right? Love as brethren. Love as, you, as we're commanded to love our brothers, our sisters, our neighbor as ourselves. Love your husband, love your wives the same exact way. They're one and the same. So read that again. A friend loveth at all times. At all times. At all times. Go ahead. And a brother is born for adversity. And a brother is born for your time of trouble, right? So I just mentioned sisters, right? I mentioned a wife, which is a sister. So real quick, let's go to Philippians 4. Philippians chapter 4, and I want verse 2. Because sisters are not exempt from this either. We just read... Uh, example of brothers having disagreements. Let's see about sisters too. Philippians chapter 4 verse 2. Come on. I beseech you, Dias, and beseech Sintichi, mm -hmm. that they be of the same mind in the Lord. That they be of the same mind in the Lord. When you read the commentaries on these two sisters, these are two Israelite women. The commentary will say Christian women, but we know Israelite women, right? When you read their, the commentary, especially Sintichi, it tells you in the commentary and in the definition, if you look up her name, it'll tell you that she got into a heated agreement with another Israelite woman, which is, what's her name, the, the top one? Euodias. Euodias. Two sisters getting into a heated argument, having contention to the point where Paul had to write in his epistles, listen, these two sisters have to agree. The same way in the body now, when two sisters have an issue, we tell y'all, go fix it. Y'all need to be agreed. When two brothers have an issue, go fix it. Why? Because ultimately it's about the unifying under Christ, period. We don't care how you feel about it. We don't care. You got to care about what God cares about. And God shows what? No matter what, that brotherhood has to be mended. It has to be. Are you going to be on the same level as you once were? Maybe not. Maybe not. Because some hurtful things might have been said or done or what have you. Because the scripture says you can lose a friend through the revealing of secrets and through, uh, what is it, uh, wounds, things of that nature, right? You can lose a friend, but you should not. That, that brother or sister should never become your enemy. Never. Per example is meaning, if that person 
that you have that contention, strife, enmity with, needed something of you, and you're able to provide it, if you don't, you're the one out the spirit. You're the one that shall get that judgment meet for your hatred. Because that's what it boils down to. It's hatred. It's hatred. Real quick, um, Proverbs 10 and 12. We're almost done. Proverbs 10, verse 12. Oh, hold on. No. 1 Corinthians 7, verse 28. Then we'll go to Proverbs 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 28. Because I made mention of the brotherhood is like the marriage. Then I showed you some sisters who had contention. But let's see what God says. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 28. Mm -hmm. But, and if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. Mm -hmm. And if a virgin marry, she hath not sinned. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, such shall have trouble in the flesh. You will have trouble in the flesh. Arguments are going to happen that's going to trouble your marriage. Trouble that unity or that bond that you should have, just like two brothers having an art with each other. Brother and brother will have an art. Sister and sister have an art. Husband and wife will have an art as well. There's going to be trouble in the flesh. But it, the scripture says, a friend, we read in Proverbs 17, 17, a friend loveth at all times. At what point does the wife stop loving the husband or the husband stop loving the wife? Only when there's, when there's uh, adultery involved. Hmm. Other than that, you need to work through whatever it is. It's not, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. If you don't want to work through it, one of you, two of you got the devil on you or both of you. It's just that simple. Same thing in a friendship with two brothers. One may want to work it out. The other doesn't. The one that doesn't, you got the damn devil on you. It's just that simple. And you're going to have to give account for that. You're going to have to give account for that. Real quick, Proverbs 19, 13. I said 10 and 12 first. Proverbs 19, 13. Proverbs 19, verse 13. Proverbs chapter 19 and verse 13. Uh -huh. A foolish son is the calamity of his father mm -hmm. and the contentions of, it, of a wife are a continual dropping. So you see that? Why wives can have contention as well. That's why I made I made the statement or the comment about the marriage, because a wife can have that strife. A wife can have that enmity, that quarreling spirit. But you can't have that unless unless you want a horrible marriage. It says like a continual dropping. What people don't realize is Esau uses a continual dropping as a torture method. They torture people just by letting water continuously drip in a very quiet environment. Eventually, it drives someone insane. <laughs> that's, what, that's what God says. God says, what I'm telling you about the continual dropping, the white man took it and used it as a torture method. But yet, there are some wives who are the same contentious spirit who won't let things go to let peace be in their household. It's not hard. Proverbs 10 and 12 now. Proverbs 10, verse 12. Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 12. Yeah, and I'm, I'm over the 15 minutes already. It's all right. Go ahead. <laughs> Hatred stirreth up strife. What does it do? Hatred stirreth up strife. So remember, one of the synonyms for contention was strife. God says sometimes when that heated disagreement comes up, there could be some hatred deep down inside. Hatred brings up that ability to strive or be in that heated disagreement with someone. If you, if you are a godly man and you see the, dis, the disagreement getting heated, guess what you do? You bow out. You take the low road. You don't have to, I don't have to even tell you I'm taking the low road. I'll just put a bar over my mouth. Why, 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 is it that important to keep pushing your point to the point where you're going to lose a brother? lose a wife lose a sister is it is it is it does it mean that much to be right you gotta think about that um we're almost done let me have uh ephesians 4 26 two more scriptures ephesians 4 verse 26 ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26 come on be ye angry and sin not. So you can be angry. You can be upset. You can have disagreements. It's not for you to be a yes man or a yes woman. 
you can state your claim, your, your state your 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 gripe. Your gripe. Thank you. You can state your gripe, and it doesn't have to go with the norm of what's being said, so to speak. But you can make your make state your gripe, and let the chips fall where they may, right? As long as you're not bringing in some damn heresies or something like that. I ain't talking about that. Don't talk about, oh yeah, Cap, Cap said in this video, you I can bring my gripe and it's a damn heresy. I ain't talking about that. Don't come with that nonsense. But if you have a, 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 a issue with the way whether something is done, whatever the case may be, you state, you state your claim. Just like we read in Galatians chapter 2, Paul did. Acts 15, he did again. These things are biblical, right? But the scripture says you can be angry, but make sure it's not sin. You have to make sure that that is not coming from a place of hatred like we just read. It's from, ha from hatred. Matter of fact, when you go to, you know what, I'm, it's going to take too much time. Um, real quick, finish, read that again. Be ye angry and sin not. So be ye angry, but don't be in this, the place of pride because it tells you that pride brings contention as well. Don't be in a place of pride. Don't be in a place of hatred. So don't sin because of of um you, you in you're in an angered state right jump to verse three now verse three endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace the bond of what in the bond of peace contention peace peace because again various offices various walks of life are all coming together to do the work of christ there's going to be some disagreements but at the end of the day it's all about the unity and the bond of peace in our Messiah, the Christ. All right, with that, Israel, we say shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth.